Welcome to the Jones Gallery Lecture Series. I'm Sarah Jones, the curator at Jones Gallery. We are a contemporary art gallery in St. John, New Brunswick, and our core mandate is to present work by contemporary Canadian artists. But art education is also important to us, and we think that art history should be accessible, understandable, and free. And that's why we hold public lectures at the gallery and produce videos like these. To keep this series free and open, we rely on the donations of our viewers. Today's video is brought to you by Michael, Olivia, Jean, and Tom. Thank you for your generous support. If you would like to also support our efforts, please donate at jonesgallery.ca slash arthistory, and the link is below in the video notes. Up today, I'd like to talk to you about a series of paintings that Monet completed in 1877. Uh, there's about 12 of them, and they're of the, the Gare Saint-Lazare, and, uh, and that's a very important train station uh, in Paris. Um, it, it featured often uh, in, in the work of the Impressionists that we know. So Courbet, well, I mean, not really an Impressionist, but, but kind of part of the gang. So Courbet uh, and, and Monet, of course, uh, Degas, Caibot. Uh, they were all um, drawn to this uh, this scene and this and this structure uh, for for a number of reasons, um, but I'll be focusing on on Monet today, and um, and we know in kind of in, in popular kind of consciousness or popular perception of of Monet, and we all kind of know that he was interested in uh, in the effects of light and. And this is really what drew him to the Gare Saint Lazare, um, because it's a it's kind of a glass and and wrought iron structure building, and uh, and the light kind of filters through the through the ceiling here. You can see this is this is one of his paintings of the Gare Saint Lazare, and then mixes with the smoke and the steam from the engines. And and these structures, I mean, this is this looks obviously kind of uh, antique or, or, or quaint to us. The, the idea of these these um, these kind of uh, kind of uh, wrought iron structures and and the trains um, as something from 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 the the nineteenth century, but to to Monet and his contemporaries, these were were remarkable structures of. Modernity, and uh, and there was one French writer, Gautier, who said that such structures were the new cathedrals of humanity that were being being built around Paris at this time. And I'll talk more about this particular painting in a moment, but it, just to describe the kind of the the atmosphere of of this station and stations like it, I'd like to to draw on Emile Zola because he he had a, a wonderful description. Um, so he writes opposite under this dusting of light the houses of the rue de Rome which you can see in the distance here grow blurred then vanished as though swept away to the left the covered markets opened up their smoke opened up the smoke stained panels panes sorry <laughs> my dog is licking his nose and distracting me the smoke stained panes of their vast porticos Amid the ghostly passage of wagons and machinery cluttering the rails, a red signal strained in the pale light. Just remember that image because I'll, I'll, I'll show a few paintings where, where this is uh, relevant. A red signal strained in the pale light. An express locomotive with its two vast devouring wheels stood alone while the thick black smoke of its smokestack rose slowly vertically into the calm air. So it's... it's it, Zola isn't exactly describing this particular painting, but it just, it's, it's so reflective. It's, it's as if he's standing in front of, of Monet's uh, painting and, and expressing this. And then just a bit more from Zola. And he saw emerging from the bridge a whiteness profuse and swirling like a bank of snow, taking flight through its array of iron girders. So that's Zola from Human Animals. And uh, this is, um, again, kind of a, a remarkable uh, passage and pairs so well with with Monet's uh, depictions of the of the Gare Saint Lazare uh, because you can see that the interest that is driving both Zola and Monet in these paintings uh, that it's this mixture of light and 
and smoke and cloud and light with with these new cathedrals, with these kind of um, temples of, of modernity uh, that are being uh, built at the time. So the story is that uh, Monet rented an apartment on the, on the first floor, uh, relatively close to the Gare Saint Lazare. He would have been very familiar with this station. Uh, about 40% of the, the rail traffic went through the Gare Saint Lazare. And, and this is the station where uh, so many of the, the, the Impressionists would have been coming and going because these were the trains to uh, Normandy. This is the train that Monet would have taken to Giverny, his garden. Uh, so, so this is trains up to the, to the northern coast of, of France. So he, he rents an apartment in January 1877 uh, on the Rue de la Mancy, which is close and it's rented under uh, his friend uh, Kai Bott, who's another uh, impressionist and, and a friend of uh, Monet and the and uh, the gang. So it looks like what we what the, from the records that we have is that Kai Bott rented the apartment, and then Monet kind of would pay pay him back, <laughs> and gradually. So uh, they're all they're all kind of uh, interconnected. Kai Bott was the only one who who well, one of the few who had money, <laughs> independent money. Uh, Monet was was broke most of the time, so was Renoir, um, until this around this period started to be a bit of a changing uh, changing uh, turning point for for Monet and his and his sales so but he's really still um, uh, in kind of an impecunious artist at at this time relying on his friend Kaibot and and he painted as I mentioned uh, just a few minutes ago uh, a series of 12 paintings of the Gare Saint Lazare and I've picked out a few to to show you today and some of them, not all 12, but some of them were exhibited in the third Impressionist exhibition. Um, and, and I talked about the, the, one of the, the first exhibition in an earlier uh, video on, uh, on Monet, and you can find that we have a, uh, on our YouTube channel. But as I mentioned in that video, uh, they, they, had, um, they had kind of been panned by a critic named Louis Lois, uh, as as kind of just painting impressions that it was kind of a t- uh, a term of derision, and they've actually kind of a- assumed <laughs> that mantle of the, they've taken that word or kind of reappropriated that word um, to to uh, to define themselves, and so they've actually started calling themselves uh, uh, impressionists and and calling their exhibitions impressionist exhibitions, and uh, so like I said, he exhibited a portion of these and. Uh, and I'll tell you more what happened with that in a moment. But first I'd like to talk about this particular painting. This is, this is probably his most famous painting that he did in this series of the Gare Saint Lazare. And you can see there are, there are a few um, uh, trains uh, coming into the station here. You can see the tracks. Uh, the bottom center, and then the platforms to the right with a few people. There are, you can identify those Parisian streets and buildings in the distance, but you can see that they they almost disappear into the smoke. And we don't know if it's steam or or clouds or smoke. It's all kind of intermingling. And, and then it slowly kind of... Mm, wafts up towards towards the ceiling of, of wrought iron and glass and there are moments where we don't look, know if we're looking through the glass if the if the clouds are on the inside or the outside but it's all kind of blending blending together here's a, a detail of the upper left and you can see that building here in the bottom of the frame just kind of disappearing into the into the bluish whitish haze you can also see Monet's what's called an impasto technique, so very, very thick uh, strokes of paint here on the canvas. Monet's work is such a joy to see in person because it's it's really hard, unless you have a, a very high resolution image, to get a sense of the the depth of the paint strokes and how the canvas is built up and up and up. 
Well, you, you can get a bit of that here from this image. And here's a, a detail of the center. So very, um, it, it's, it's, he's, he's interested in, in this particular piece, how the light is filtering through the glass, how it filters through cloud, how it filters through steam. And then how, how certain elements of the scene are picked up or dispersed by, by that effect. And this is a detail of the, the lower right. Look how the, the people are reduced to um, sometimes just two strokes of paint. There's a bit of red, a bit of black, a little bit of kind of uh, peachy color, a few strokes of green. It's reduced to, the, to its most basic elements. So the people uh, are not the, the, the focal point here. Um, they're kind of enveloped by the by the light and by the by the steam. And also look at the hazy outline to the left here, the hazy outline of that of that steam engine. So it also is being enveloped by the by the steam and the smoke. It's kind of blue blue steam, which is obviously the color is changing because of the light filtration. And what is what is so interesting about this series of paintings, and I, and I talked about this also in the previous video about Monet, is what, what marks the Impressionists is not so much the, the technique. So the technique varied from artist to artist. I mentioned earlier Kaibot. Uh, Kaibot had a very realistic approach. Uh, Monet and Renoir um, had much more um, kind of loose, loose strokes, heavy, heavy application of the paint. Uh, you're probably familiar with Degas. His approach is different again. Uh, so they weren't necessarily united by their by their painting technique, uh, but as really as they were by their um, their interest in certain subject matter. And for for Monet and, and I think others and why they were drawn to the Gare Saint Lazare is because they wanted to show the the Paris or the world. That was that was around them. They weren't interested in painting history scenes. They're not interested in painting figures from, from uh, uh, kind of uh, m the mythology or from religion. They wanted to uh, to paint the contemporary life, paint the modern life, and that idea is what really binds them together. And and in this case with Monet is that he is he's adopting a radically new painting approach with this with this kind of loose loose thick brushwork, hasty, kind of uh, almost an unfinished looking brushwork. He's applying a, a modern painting technique to to kind of modern industrial forces. And this this marriage of the two of them that, that renders these these paintings uh, still so so impactful and kind of what makes them really important uh, in, in terms of the Impressionist movement. This is another another painting. Remember, Zola talked about the the red signal kind of peering through the peering through the smoke, and uh, and I love this scene. See that red signal in the center, and then the the individual brushstrokes here of the white and orange and purple clouds, and I love how hastily the the do I have a detail? Oh, I do. Look at that. Okay. Uh, Look how hastily the paint has been applied and the details obscured. I'm going to pull back again. The details obscured of that locomotive on the left. And it does convey a sense of, of movement that I don't think could have been conveyed if it was painted in a more realistic style. So we, we, he's, he's evoking the, it's the overall feeling of the scene rather than the individual details. So the details are sacrificed to the to the kind of the atmosphere, the essence of the scene here. That red signal, I think that's that's um, it stands out so well against against the 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 oranges and the and the I was going to say greens, purple. That is purple. <laughs> that red kind of um, straining through this through this hazy light here's another 
La Tranche de Batineau from the same year. So this is more of the train yard, not the station itself. But uh, we can see the same effect here. So the, the application, look, look how thick that paint is of the, the clouds kind of moving off diagonally to the right. I love this one. Uh, this is the exterior of the Gar Saint Lazar. The signal, again, the red light kind of peering through the, through the clouds. And, I, I, and look at the, the, the brush strokes, so the, those kind of cream color uh, strokes here that are uniting the, the clouds and the steam together. And then how, how stark these signals, these kind of black and gray uh, signals then stand out against that. So it's that kind of juxtaposition of the, the haziness of the light and the roundness of those strokes compared to the, the harshness of the, of the, uh, the railway structures. And, and as I said, this, some of these, these paintings, you know, six or eight of them were, were shown in the third Impressionist exhibition. Uh, sales were okay. We have some, some, some notes that he, he, he did indeed make some sales with this. And I think this, this artist typically didn't exhibit uh, works in a series. So uh, at, the, at this time, this is one of the first times that we have kind of on record of, a, of an artist choosing a particular subject matter and then showing a number of paintings dedicated to that subject. So typically, uh, an artist like Monet, he might do a couple seascapes, he might do a portrait, uh, then he might do a garden scene, and then, you know, something else kind of thrown in together. So, so thematically, they weren't necessarily linked. Until this third Impressionist exhibition where he showed these paintings of the Gare Saint Lazare, and sales were, were not too bad. For the, for the first time, Monet hadn't, like I said, hadn't had great sales up until this point. And I think there is this kind of um, a balancing that, that, or a, um, an attempt to balance uh, kind of commercial realities um, and, and the kind of genuine interest in, in painting the changing effects of light on a particular subject. Uh, because then after the Gar Saint Lazare series, he starts to move into his, his very famous series paintings uh, like of the poplars or the grain stacks or the cathedral at Rouen. And sales for those just go off the charts. And, uh, and it turned out that clients liked to buy paintings that were part of a series. And I think Monet just starts to glimpse that here in 1877. But despite, despite the, the sales being, being decent, uh, the majority of the reviews were, were quite hostile. Um, the inspector of, of fine arts uh, he hated the exhibition. He hated Cezanne especially, but he kind of lumped Cezanne and, and Monet together. And he said that uh, children entertaining themselves with paper and paint do better. Um, yeah, they, they they didn't like this. So here's here's another here's another uh, uh, critic in the the Figaro. Uh, Monet has attempted to give us the disagreeable impression of several locomotives whistling all at once. And of course, that's exactly what he's he's doing here, and that's why that's why it works. Um, but these critics, one, did not like. They thought that modernity was, um, or kind of the industrial, um, the industry of modern life, uh, was was too loud and uh, and too dirty and kind of uh, imposing on on kind of the French um, idyll. Um, so they didn't like that. But then they also didn't like Monet's. Um, uh, mode of of painting, so they're they're panning the work for for exactly now what we what we admire about it. And here's another another critic in uh, Le Monastère Universel. The artist has sought to impart the impression produced on travelers by the noise of the engine on arrival and departure. <laughs> and that's that's supposed to be a criticism. We read it now. It's like yeah, exactly. That that's that's what's happening. Uh, but. Uh, but they, but they, 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 they didn't like that. 
and uh, so so yes, kind of that um, the the noisiness and the movement uh, that I was uh, telling you about in this scene is is what really uh, set the critic uh, critics on edge, um, as well as the unfinished nature they thought of the of the canvases. And they, why this caused such a consternation among the critics is, is because Monet was doing something uh, radically new. So as I mentioned a few minutes ago, um, these paintings are important because they're tackling a modern subject with a modern technique or a modern approach. And what the audience and what critics would have been familiar with is a much more finished and um, a detailed uh, approach to to the surface of the painting. So here, this is a this is a caricature by by Daumier, and uh, and these these two figures here are, are kind of leaning in to closely inspect a, a painting. And they're saying you can you have to get in close so that you can you can tell if the the color is good. <laughs> and that's what they expected to do. And uh, and of course, when you when you really lean into a Monet, if we if we get closer and closer and closer, it kind of descends into a into a um, chaos of, of, uh, of, of paint and brush strokes thickly, thickly applied. Whereas a painting like this by uh, Jean-Léon uh, Jérôme, The Death of Caesar, if we lean in, the details all stay intact. And this is what was traditionally um, accepted by the French Academy and the French state. So that, uh, that inspector of fine arts, this is what he really wanted to see at the time. Jérôme was a contemporary of the Impressionist. And so in technique, they wanted the painting surface to be very finished, highly refined and detailed. They also wanted the subject matter. They didn't want to see their, their own world reflected back at them. Uh, they wanted to see historical subjects. So, so paintings of, in this case, of Caesar, this is the death of Caesar. So ancient Rome, that was good. Ancient Greece, even better. Or some kind of religious religious topic. Napoleon, you could paint Napoleon. That's fine. <laughs> but not the train station where you take the train every day. So, so Monet here is defy, uh, defying both of the, the central rules of the French Academy. Look at that difference in the surface. Jérôme, finished. Monet. Critics went nuts. And thank you very much for watching and how you can support the lecture series. As I said, you can donate at jonesgallery.ca. Uh, Technical support, as always, uh, is by Caleb Jones. And we'll talk to you soon.